One of the things being discussed with utilizing cover crops to be an advantage, especially during wet years, is uh, it's a concept called planting green. And uh, you know, there's other names for it, but basically it's having a live root mass to drive on while you're planting. So you're actually planting the crop uh, while there's something else growing. Uh, and it does work. I mean, I think everybody can, can get their head around the idea that it's easier to go drive across a wet uh, grass field than it is to drive across a wet tilled field, right? So a combination of the no-till with better soil structure and then having some live roots growing while you're doing those field operations uh, is a concept that's definitely worth looking at. And a lot of producers are doing that now. Uh, especially in the higher moisture regions of the country. In the, in the planting green concept process, on my farm, it's using rye, because it's, again, it's got to be something that overwinters, uh, survives the North Dakota winter, and then grows the next spring. One concept is I'm broadcasting the rye into standing corn, and the rye survives, greens up, so you have this nice green cereal crop growing in the springtime with the intended purpose of coming back with soybeans to plant right into that green residue. And we know that's a time-tested, uh, good management practice to plant soybeans into rye, growing rye. We just know those two things work. It's like apple pie and ice cream almost. Now doing that for other crops, planting corn into rye can be a little more dicey because it, it's not as compatible from a production standpoint. Uh, that's where I've been trying it with a concept that we coined bio strip till, where I actually have the rye off the corn row, but where the implement's driving. So the tractor's driving on top of live rye plants and rye roots, and the corn planter is actually operating in the, uh, the brassica row, which is low residue, uh, the soil's all loosened up from the brassica root systems, uh, but the organic matter, or the, the cover crop has quickly decayed and uh, left the soil surface fairly bare and dark, so for fast warm-up. That, that's been working really well, and there, there have been uh, some years we get yield response because of it. With corn, uh, we know that corn doesn't do well with competition early. The standard practice would be to end the rye uh, a week or two before planting. But then what you open yourself up to is if you get a bunch of rain between the time you spray it and the time you plant, you could potentially aggravate your moisture situation because now you've got more dead residue on the surface uh, that's keeping the ground from drying out. Uh, so it's just kind of a balance there. You got to figure out where it fits on your own operation and uh, uh, and maybe there's uh, this year I'm replacing the rye with alfalfa. I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm planting alfalfa hoping that it'll overwinter. We know alfalfa is less detrimental to the corn in the springtime. Corn and alfalfa can kind of grow together for a little while and be friends before you kill the alfalfa out. Uh, so I'm going to try that. I don't know if it'll be significant enough by in its establishment to be well established enough to pr provide uh, trafficability in the springtime, but unless you try it, how do you know? I don't have any reference other than just trying it. Mm -hmm.